off and on I get requests from people for plans that I make because I usually um, do like 200% sizes of flight test plans and other things like that. And I have no problem all sharing those plans. I don't care. I've gotten so much free stuff. Everything I know is from the internet for free. And so this isn't um, so that I don't have to share plans. I just, it's kind of a, you know, teaching a person how to fish kind of thing here. Um, I, don't, I don't think people realize how easy it is and how little time it takes to take plans that someone else has already made and simply make them larger or smaller or uh, to whatever size you want. It's very easy, very quick. And so I'm gonna go through uh, two different ways um, that you can get your plans using the program Inkscape. Uh, you can get it from inkscape.com. It's a free program and it's a 2D vector graphics program. And the nice thing about that is that um, you can size up and down. You don't use, you don't lose any quality. It's a mathematical drawing program, so you can go as big or as small. So, I'm just going to drag some a PDF plan from off screen into Inkscape. And again, this is going to be un unedited, mostly just quick, so I can get it posted. Um, so when you drag a PDF file in, this is actually a three-page PDF and you can flip through the pages to see which one you want. Um, I think for now, I'm just gonna import one page in, but if, if I was doing a full plane, I would import page one, then I would import page two, then I would import page three, but I'll just do, I'll just do the wings and the tail section, and you know it'll be the same thing for all the other pages or any other plane that you do. So um, I'm gonna leave all the other settings alone I'm going to do page three. I'm going to click OK. Now, depending on what type of CPU and processor you have, your computer could have a hard time here. So now what we have here is the PDF. And, you know, if you wanted, I'm actually going to show how to do this. You could trace these out using Inkscape, but um, there's a grouping tool. Control, control G groups everything you have selected into one object but there's a way to undo that and i found out that you can do that with these pdfs from uh, flight test control shift g ungroup something and so what i do is i hold down control shift and then i just spam g like i don't know 10 15 times and then once uh, your computer stops freaking out you can see it has broken it down into all the pieces that the designer used to put these objects together. So then, just to make it easier to work with, I'll go through and, you know, delete all the things that I don't care about because they're just gonna slow us down. You know, maybe this doesn't matter, I don't know, I just have always done it. Now, it can be kind of hard when things are close together, you don't wanna grab some stuff by accident let's just see and now i'm holding down control to select multiple things okay so i did happen to get that whole thing now to show you what can happen if you don't do this right i'm going to control g this wing but not control not group these things and you'll see the problem that this causes because you'll probably do this on accident at some point this is one object. This is, you know, 30, 40 objects. When we grab these all and say increase 200%, they're all going to go 200%. They're, that's going to work just fine. What the grouping takes care of is their relationship to each other. A grouped object, they're all connected. Ungrouped objects, they're all going to go up 200% without any connection or care relation to any of the parts next to them, their positions to each other. So let's just show the bad way first. Let's group these. I'm gonna go up to the top and change that to percent. Lock this so that it changes in both directions equally. And let's just type in 200. Huh. Well, I guess I was totally wrong. You know, that might have been a previous version. That's actually good to know. That actually, you know, could save some time. 
Huh, cool. Well, let me undo that. And let's just focus on just the one wing, because again, we don't really need everything. So here we have this wing, half. Let's just flip it over. Control D, I can duplicate that. I can mirror it over. And this isn't exact, you know, obviously they would meet together there and stuff. But anyways, I'm just gonna grab this and group it. And we have a wingspan of 41 inches or 1,042 millimeters. So again, there's a couple ways you could size this up. Uh, you could hold down control and just grab the corner. Holding down control keeps it square, expands in all directions equally. Let me undo that. Um, we could do it like we did before. You could go in and do percent and say, you know, 200%. And then if we change that back to inches, we'll see that now it's 82 inches. Um, now there's something else you can do. When you have a whole bunch of parts, um, sometimes you don't know yet the exact percentage you want to get to. Um, and so you don't want to be playing around with one part because you'll, you'll get down this line and forget, oh no, can I even undo enough to get back to the original? So they're all the same size so I can scale them all equally. So one thing that I'll do is use a online percentage calculator. And if we pull up program here and we'll type in percentage of a number. <clears throat> and let me see if I can find one real quick. So here we go. Y is what percent of X? So we know that this wingspan is 41 inches. So we'll put that one in there. Let's say we want to make it 24 inches. Calculate. 58.54%. So then we could come in here and grab everything, go to percentage and type in 58.54%. Now if we change that back to inches and click on that, 24 inches. And so if you have a specific wingspan you're looking for and you want all the pieces to scale together to that size, that is one way that you could do it. Um, now let's talk about <clears throat> a PDF file that does not import well. How, you could also trace this out. Um, and a lot of times when you're doing your own DIY scratch building, especially uh, converting up, you're not going to be using the same materials. So a lot of these cut lines and stuff do not just, they don't work. You're going to have to figure it on yourself. And mainly what you're concerned with on sizing up is the silhouette, the, the wingspan, you know, uh, where the ailerons are, the difference, the distance between, you know, the trailing edge and uh, where the tail feathers start. So if you grab the line tool, and we'll just zoom in here, what you can do is just start left clicking I'm just being quick here and I'll just change the color so that it stands out more. Oh, we already have a red. Let's do a green. There we go. And maybe even just increase the thickness of the line so just so it stands out. So now here is our shape. So, and then if I wanted, um, you know, I could take the line tool and make click and then enter stops, click again, enter stops, click, 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 enter. And if I was to just, oops, let me undo that and grab the correct tool. If we're just to grab that and slide it off screen, you can see that we have, you know, that took me what, like 
five seconds. Um, now maybe you like this rounded corner. You can grab this line tool, click on this object. And I think, I don't know. Anyways, there's lots of ways. I'm not gonna get into the details of how to use Inkscape, but basically you would grab all that stuff, control G, now it's one object and you can, you know, use all those other ways I showed you to make it bigger or smaller. So even if you do the control shift G to ungroup and it doesn't ungroup, maybe they saved it in the future, they might change how they make their plans. Um, now the other thing is once you have this big or okay, in this case, small 24 inches, you want to get this printed out. And that is the nice thing about setting everything in real world dimensions up here is this will print out exactly that size in real world. One, one quirky thing about Inkscape is that as far as what you save when you're saving as another file type, like a, a, a PDF, which is what we need to get it to to print, it only is going to save what is inside of what it considers the page, the document, which is this outline here. And you access, that, access those settings by going to File, Document, Properties. So what we need to do is just get this down in that corner and we will go in and adjust the width. Let's just say 25. It looks good. How about 24 and a half? And then we'll just drop the height down to maybe eight, nine maybe, how about 10? Okay, so there we have it. It's within the boundaries um, of that. And so we're gonna do file, save as, and let's put it where I have my other stuff. And we'll just say PDF. Now off screen, I'm going to go open. Oh, whoops, sorry. I did that wrong. Let's do that correctly. Save as, change this to PDF, save. I like, I like these settings, 300 DPI is pretty darn good. You could crank that up if you want higher quality, but for something you're probably just going to cut up, 300 is fine. Okay, uh, now I'm gonna off screen open that up. And here we are in, I'm using Adobe Acrobat. So then what you would do is you go up to file, print, poster, and make sure you have your, um, whatever size paper you actually have. You can see here that it's actually going to break it up into three eight and a half by 11s that you would print out, flight test style, tape together, you know, cut out and use that. So anyways, that's what I wanna show you guys. Super easy to size up, size down. Um, I guess one kind of bonus tip is you can actually use, I, this is actually why I come in here to do my planes, is you can actually figure out um, parts placement. So let me just pull up a plane that I'm working on right now. I'm taking the flight test Bronco plans and I'm sizing them up to 200%. And let's just bring that over, oops, wrong one, sorry. So, Here is the FT Bronco plans that I sized up 200%. Now, you can see I've dropped some parts on here. Let me ungroup that. This is the actual dimensions of the battery I'm going to put in here. That is actually how much space it'll take in the body. This is actually 11 inches, my prop, so I can make sure that it's going to still belly land and that it won't hit the fuselage. Um, here's the actual servos. Yes, they'll fit inside my ESC. That is the actual size of my motor. So really nice, super cool. You can figure out placement ahead of time, um, make adjustments in here. Um, you know, I've even put in some, the actual size of some carbon spars. So a little bonus point there. That's actually why I use this program. So anyways, talk to you later. Bye.